Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. If you would please stand and join us in singing a new hallelujah. We sing since Jesus came into my heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have lied in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus 
came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul, like the sea builds strong, since Jesus came into my heart, I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure, since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, words of joy on my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I shall go there to dwell. City I know since Jesus came into my heart, and I'm happy, so happy as onward I go since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, what's a joy of oh my soul? The sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart. Now, if you wouldn't join us to sing because he lives. God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon and empty grave is Savior lives because He lives. I can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone because I know. Indeed, Father, we are here because you live, because you are life, the giver of life to all things. 
As we come to worship you this day, we are overwhelmed as we consider your grace and mercies to us. And we ask ourselves, why should you care for something so insignificant? And yet we know that in your infinite wisdom, you put a great price on your creatures. So much so that you gave your only son to become sin for us, to face that horrible situation that we might be saved, we who were enemies, who cared nothing for you, yet you reached out to us. And so we bow before you now to acknowledge the greatness of your grace and your mercies, the greatness of your power, the greatness of that love that overcomes all obstacles. <clears throat> we come to thank you for what you have given to us by way of family, by way of parents, and we thank you that the love you have for us is patterned in the love of a godly mother for her children. And so we give you thanks that you establish the family and cause those who trust you to devote themselves to their families to do everything in their power to protect and provide for them. And may we as your family fall before you as your children and as your slaves that we might understand even more of your grace and be strengthened even more by your fellowship so that we will indeed be united as the Father and the Son are one, so may all your children be. We pray that as we honor you, as we fall before you, that we will have only one motive, and that is to honor Christ, to lift him up and exalt him above all things, for we pray in his name. Amen.
morning. You think I brought you a blanket for those of you going to get uh, cold, but uh, no, I've got something to share about what we did Tuesday. But uh, good morning. Aren't you glad you're here? Well, some in the choir are glad you're here. Aren't you glad you're here this morning? Before we, um, before we d dismiss Children's Church, if you came today and your mother's here and you would like to honor her and possibly get lunch this afternoon with her, uh, would you just stand right where you are? If you are co have come here to honor your mother, just stand right where you are. Everybody, if your mother's here and you'd like to honor her, just stand right where you are. All right. Amen. Now, let's, uh, let's give our mothers a hand, okay? All right. Now, you, uh, you all be seated. And uh, who's got children's church? Oh, okay. The Parkers. You'll have a great time. Everybody, Judy, you, you and Dale have to go out as fast as they did. So, uh, If you're visiting with us and you have a child, it's all right to, to let them go if they want to go. We've lost very few from between here and, uh, and they usually show up in a day or two. And so uh, we're thankful for that. But um, be reminded we're going to be having Bible school this summer and uh, both for the youth and the children, and I hope you'll be praying uh, because statistics tell us that uh, that over a third of them will give their life to Christ at their tender age. When they get to be teenagers, it drops down to about 9%. When it gets to be adults, it's about 5%. So we need to invest our time and our resources where we can reach the most. So I hope you'll be praying there. Um, if you are... Visiting with us for the first time, um, we got a new uh, bulletin cover, and uh, it doesn't have a perforated area on there. So if you're visiting with us, get the neighbor's pen next to you and write their name on your their hand on their hand, and so you'll have a somebody will have a record of your visit. Okay, you just there's a pink slip. I'm uh, I pink slips. I found one in my time clock one time, and that really, uh, I have an aversion to pink slips, and so uh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't look at that. But uh, anyway, all right. I knew Angie would come up with something, but okay. All right, fill that out and put it in the offering plate at the end of the service. Um, if you're visiting with us the first time, you just remain seated. We want to honor you, and so... Um, we're going to stand in your presence, and we're going to find somebody to love in the Lord. So uh, visitors, remain seated. Everybody else, love somebody in the Lord. <laughs> you find yourself comfortable. Our ushers are prepared to give a little remembrance to our mothers. We do want to thank the Lord for all that are here, but uh, Elsa Aiken is here, and, and Elsa has uh, moved up to the assisted living center, and she said that she was the mayor up there now, and I can certainly believe that. Uh, but she's 94 years young, and she's sitting over here, and let's, let's give her a, a hand. She always asks about my father, who is also 94, and, and, uh, um, but we're thankful for her being here. Now, if you're a mother today, we want you to stand right where you are. Indulge me just a minute, ladies. Okay. While you're standing, I, the ushers are going to come and they're going to be giving you something. But I would like to share two things, and then we want to pray for you. Psalm 139, 13 says, For thou hast possessed my reins, 
Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. The word for possess means to create and reigns as organs. And thou hast woven me together and protected me in my mother's. And the word mother means the one who holds life. And the word for womb means the, the at the bottom of the heart, the cradle that God placed in your, in your body to bring forth life at the bottom of your heart. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that thou, my soul knoweth right well. The word wonderfully means distinctive. We had a funeral for a 21-week-old yesterday. And at 21 weeks, the kiddos have their fingerprints. And God breathed life and knoweth right well to be able to see and knit together the fellowship with God. This is all going on in your womb, ladies. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret. My bones were not concealed from God. He was there. Thine eyes did see my substance. God's eyes looked upon the embryo while it was yet imperfect. Above all the book, all my members were written. My name was written down. While God had fellowship in, my, in your womb with me. How precious also are thy thoughts of me, O God. The word thoughts is friendship and fellowship. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I will still be with thee. Ladies, the word for awake literally means when our children are plucked from, from us, I will still, I will be surrounded by God. And I want to share with you this, this verse. Only a housewife. Lord, I'm just a humble housewife. She said with a weary sigh, I have nothing but a humdrum life of washing clothes and baking pies. Lord, you know how I always long to serve you with my life. But Lord, I don't know what went wrong. I've turned out an old housewife. Might have been a teacher or sung on the radio. I might have married a preacher and helped in his work, you know. Then God answered, and his voice soft and low, I gave you five boys so dear. Well, one is to speak on the radio, and one is to sing for me here, one to go out across the sea and speak to the natives there, one in the homeland to preach of me, the other to travail in prayer. Now who will win these boys to me? And teach them the gospel true? Or who will lead them to give to me all they are now or hope to be? Who will help them through their school days? Teach them to my word to be true. Who will encourage them on the way? These tasks I've entrusted to you. A godly mother. I'm thankful that I had one, and I'm thankful for each of you today. Father, we thank you for our mothers. We thank you for these that are, are standing in your presence. And Father, I pray they never discount whatever our airways assail motherhood today, the esteemed honor that you have bestowed upon them by knitting together a precious life in your womb and having fellowship, Father, with that life while they nurture and expectantly bring that life forward. Father, help us as we wrap our arms around the little ones you give us that we can be reminded that you loan them to us for just a little while and we are to 
point them back to you. We thank you that that happens here in your house. And we thank you for your presence this hour. And it's always in Christ's glorious name do we come begging. Amen. Let's give our mothers a hand. It's always an honor when Mike comes and takes us into God's throne room. Let's go ahead. Set your mind at ease. You do what's possible. You do the praise. I'll do the miracle. I'll make the way. You put your trust in me. You keep the faith. Then when you can't go on, that's when I'll do the miracle. We are His people. He is our God. He saved us from a wicked world of sin. Why do we worry when it all falls apart? When the stormy tides of life come crashing in? We have just one purpose, that's to trust with all our heart And to stand back with wonder as we watch the waters part You do what's possible You do the praise I'll do the miracle I'll make the waves You put your trust in me the faith then when you can't go on that's when I'll do the miracles you do what's possible you do the praise I'll do the miracles I'll make the way You put your trust in me You keep the faith Then when you can't go on My child, then when you can't go on That's when I I got this on. There you go. Turn with me to 1 Samuel. We're going to look at the life of Hannah. 
Ladies, today everything that we have been trying to share with you as Eric led and stay on the firing line. Our children are not our possessions. And I know that that's very hard for many of us to um, acquiesce to. But you see, Psalm 127.3 says, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord. The word heritage is a permanent possession. Now we are all God's children. He intended for us to have fellowship with Him in heaven. And so our journey and our responsibility is to prepare our children to be in heaven with us for eternity. As arrows are in the hands of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. I'm not a archer, but I understand that depending upon what you are uh, trying to hunt, you can put different tips on the, on the arrows and, and different kind of feathers on, uh, so it will fly in different directions. That's exactly what he's sharing. You've got all a child that has fingerprints that says that they are unique. And he says to train up that child in the way he shall go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And so he says, you've got to know the bent of your child. And, and then you've got to so prepare the shaft of that arrow and the point of that arrow and the guidance of that arrow that that child is going to seek first God and his kingdom and his righteousness. And I want to tell you something. That is a battle. That is an absolute battle today because our children are taught from literally when they can first hear and see the television that we are to be separated from God. And that we are not to mention Jesus Christ's name in public. And that we are not created in the image of God, but we are some polywog that grew legs and walked out of some primeval ooze. And so often we get caught up in trying to give our children more material than we want to give them of our time and our arms and our love. And you see, that's where they get confused messages. That mom and dad love me if I do good, if I make hundreds and if I am the star on everything. And while God knitted us in his womb, he said, I love you just the way you are. I've made you just the way you are. And you see, we have no idea how he wants to use our children, but he wants to use them. Hannah was raised at a very critical time in Israel's history. Eli was the priest at Chilhoth, at the, at the temple there. He had two sons that were absolute reprobates, Phinehas and Hophni. If I had names like that, I'd be a reprobate too, you know. They were probably the wickedest priests that ever were in that, uh, in that position. They had made the temple one of bawdiness. They had illicit sex wherever they could. They browbeat the uh, parishioners as they came in for their sacrifices. They would take the best meats for themselves, not for the sacrifice. They used the things of God as a talisman to try to gain their own uh, victory and success. They took the Ark of the Covenant out in a battle with the Philistines so because they had heard that that Ark brought uh, Israel some success years before. They were beat soundly. The Ark was captured by the Philistines for a number of years. During that battle were both Hophni and Phinehas killed. When the news came back to Eli... 
He was a very uh, verbose, large man. In his sadness, he fell backwards, broke his neck, and he died. All of this was going on when Hannah was praying that God would give her a child. Her womb was barren. And as so often was the case in that time, that Elkanah, her husband, married another woman. And she brought him forth children. And she made great fun of Hannah. And Hannah had one desire of her life. Hannah's name means grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. If you would, in honor to God and His Word, stand as we read. We're going to read 1 Samuel chapter 1 through chapter 11. Now there was a certain man of Ramathaim Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Dahu, the son of Zeph, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Peninnah. And Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Peninnah his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore, for, her, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to, you, to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And he was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. She vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give unto him the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Father, we love you and praise you and thank you for your word. Bless it now as it goes forth, for it's always in Christ's glorious name that we come begging. Amen. <coughs> By the grace of God, you see, when we understand the sovereignty of God, then we also must understand the time frame of God. You see, He looks, and I've shared with you many times, He has no past or future. He's is always present tense. And so when you are looking at your life, that's the reason God says our fellowship is today. Yesterday is gone. He said, let the dead bury the dead. We are to praise God today. And he said, tomorrow, you not even promised that. So let's look at everything today. God sees our birth and our death all in the same continuum. And it makes things very simple, folks, if we live our life that way. For you see, some people... Their philosophy is tomorrow is the perfect time to do anything, right? Never do today what you can put off till tomorrow. And you see, God says only today is what you've been given. So if He impresses you to share the Lord with somebody, if He impresses you to go and, 
and try to encourage, whatever he impresses you to do, to do it today. That is what is so precious about our children, ladies. You see, how do you know that you're going to be given time with them tomorrow? Somebody's purse or pants are going off. It's always exciting. Always, it, it really gets exciting. You see, that's what that little life is all about. I don't know how you do with your children. You say, well, my children are grown. They're still, we're all still God's children. Do you pray for your kids daily? I'm not just talking about it. I mean, pray with them in the presence so that they understand and hear your word going to God's ear. Do you do that? That is where the children learn that doesn't matter what the pressures are of the world, that my parents depended on God. That is where they heard, when regardless of the, what's going on in their life, how much you love them, whenever we disciplined our children, when we got through, we'd pray with them. And I've shared with you before, Katie was the toughest we had. Kathy says she's just like you. But I'd, I would discipline her, and she'd just be as stiff as a poker. And I said, now I'm going to pray with you, Katie. And she couldn't talk plain. And she said, I don't want to play with you. And I said, I don't care if you don't play with me or not. We're going to pray. And every part of her body, she was pulling away from me. But as I began to pray, you could just feel all of that anger and all of that tension just leave her little body. You see, that's what Hannah said. She, had no, she knew of the issues in the temple. But I don't think she had any idea of the sovereignty of God and what he had planned. She said, give me a boy. And I'll give him back to you. Give me a boy. Samuel was the last judge and the last priest of Israel. <laughs> His name means God hears. Hannah was not in the Davidic line of Christ, but Samuel anointed David as king. Hannah's handprint is all over history. And it said every time Elkanah went to the temple, Hannah was with him. And she was praying to God to deliver her and answer her prayer. But when Samuel was born, she said, Elkanah, I'm not going to the temple. I'm going to nurture and take care of this little boy. Do you understand, mothers, you see, the spiritual responsibility of the home is the fathers. And dads, every one of you, right now, I want you to understand something. That whether you accept this responsibility or not, when you stand before Christ, He is going to hold you responsible for being the spiritual leader of your home. It is not the mother's responsibility to get the kids up on Sunday morning to go to church and get you up on Sunday morning, it is your responsibility. And all mothers said what? I tell you what, men, if we would accept our responsibility as being the, the spiritual leaders and praying a spiritual umbrella over our families, Satan's darts couldn't get into to them hard, nearly as much as they do because you are protect, protecting them with those prayers. But mothers, you are the, the emotional fiber of the home. And when you teach your children to be focused on God, you see, Samuel never forgot 
those years he spent with his mother. She probably took him there when he was about four. Now, she didn't just abandon him. Scripture says that she went back and she took coats for him and various things, and I think she went to the temple a lot. But when Samuel was around a teenager, he heard God speak his name, and he went to, to, uh, he went to Eli and said, Did you want something? And Excuse me, he said, I didn't say anything to you. That happened three times, and finally Eli said, God's talking to you. And, <coughs> and he said, when he speaks to you, just say, your servant hears. And God gave a message to Eli as to how he was going to be taking away his line of leading the nation of Israel um, in the synagogue. But he learned that from sitting at the feet of his mom. She had a loving husband. She loved heaven. And she loved her home. Ladies, I can't even imagine all the conflict and all the pressure through which you live your life. And you can figure out a way to put those things in order in your life. Heaven, home, and a husband. It can all be balanced. And you say, preacher, you don't know how, I, how all of this happens. Sure I do. We've been there and done that. We raise kids without cell phones. We put messages on the refrigerator. Hey, I'm over here with this one, you know. Three of them playing ball at the same time. It's exciting. But where is the focus, folks? We have a lot of grandparents here. And God says that he, hath not, uh, he will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. You see, Hannah did what she could do when she could do it. And God used it years and generations down the line. She did what God had asked her to do and what she promised God. Oh God, give me a child. I can't tell you how many times people in my years here, would you pray that we'd have a child? And God blesses their womb and a child brings forth and what happens? We never see him at church. Why? Because little Fauntleroy, he needs to sleep on Sundays and, and he needs this and he needs that and, and so we just can't really interrupt that. What kind of fellowship are you having with the God that you said, would you make my womb fertile, but then I can't entrust to you what you have entrusted to me? Folks, whether your child, come, you bring him to church. I used to uh, go to sleep in church and, and uh, would wake up in church. That's a good place to go to sleep and wake up. Now I put people to sleep and, I, and uh, I hope they wake up. My mom's been dead 19 years. When Kathy and I went to share with him how that God was stirring us and leading us into the ministry, I've shared with you before, my first thing that came out of my mother's mouth was, you'll starve to death. But my grandmother told me something, and I've, God has reminded me many times about it. I was born in Baptist Hospital, and back then they didn't have birthing rooms, and when I was born, they came and got my grandmother because my mom, for a period of time, was paralyzed. And my grandmother said when, I, when she came in, the doctor had me laying on my mother's stomach and he was taking care of the umbilical cord and all these things. But He was trying to comfort my grandmother and comfort my 
mother, she could hear, but she couldn't move. And he lifted me up. And my grandmother said he said a prayer over my life. When I was 29 years old, God chose to begin to harvest that prayer. But you see, today we are all recipients of what a godly mother was used in investing those seeds in her son's life. Now, folks, <laughs> I wasn't a hellion, but I was a heathen. And I was remorseful when I got caught. Now, I wasn't, uh, I, like I said, I wasn't all that bad. You ever heard that from the sinners? I'm not all that bad. I wasn't leading anybody to Christ. But my mother was faithful in planting seeds. Ladies, this morning, your name might not be Hannah, but you've been given the grace of God to nurture and to love and to grow and to point those kiddos back to Christ. And husbands, you are uh, impaneled by God to come alongside that godly woman and truly be the umbrella over your family. Father, today we all live in your grace. We don't understand it. But Father, we trust you that if we could just be obedient, that we could live today and do all that you want us to do for your kingdom today. Whether it be with a child or with you with your family, whatever it might be. That God has a plan. And your kiddos may not be Samuels, but they may be used to touch many lives in many ways. Father, today we all need to make a decision. Am I going to listen to that still, small voice and be obedient so that those around me will learn to obey as well? Father, you know the need of every heart here today. During this time of invitation, we just pray that we can follow the leading of your Spirit. We'll give you the praise, for it's always in Christ's glorious name that we come back. Amen. If you would, take a... 320.